Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. It isn't that often that landscapes feature fire, other than the occasional burning off of the heather. You may be faced with an open fireplace and an interior scene, or you might want to depict a gathering around an autumnal bonfire. If fantasy is more your bag, then there are always dragons. However, I came across this small fire on the beach at Lindisfarne in Northumberland. On this occasion, the abbey was covered in scaffolding, which was a bit of a disappointment. However, these flames really captivated my imagination and more than made up for it. I knew I wanted to do something with it in terms of a painting, but the thing that really kept nagging at me was, how do I paint fire? If you're going to paint fire in watercolour, then one of the best things you can do to prepare is to observe it at first hand. If you have an open fire at home in your living room, then you're all set. And I'm more than a little jealous. Light it and look closely at it. If you don't have an open fire in the house, then maybe now's the time to burn some rubbish in the garden. There's something very primeval about the activity. If you're going to dance around it in the pink and crinklies, however, just make sure you're not going to be upsetting the neighbours. Flames dance around and create interesting random shapes. Heat rises, so the teardrop shapes that fire creates invariably result in fine points reaching upwards. Take a look at the variety of different shapes in this fire as I pause it a few times. Warm colours are a given, of course. Yellows and reds should be dominant. Remember that at the heart of the fire, where it's at its hottest, it will most likely appear white. Drawing out fire is as you might expect. The flames curl upwards and get thinner as they do so. As we've just seen from the earlier video example, however, they form other shapes too flattening out occasionally as they dance around and breaking off into smaller shapes, albeit very briefly. A definite flow to the curves helps to sell the idea of movement. Geometric angles and absolute straight lines should generally be avoided, although they do occur. Perhaps the most important property of your flames is that they should appear random. Introduce any repetitive pattern at all and the fire will start to look very unnatural. Once I'm happy with the design of my flames, it's time to start throwing some paint at them. The natural starting point is yellow. I'm using cadmium yellow to trace the shapes of the flames, concentrating on their outer edges and leaving the central areas white, where the flames should be at their hottest. I'm painting wet onto dry, so the marks I'm making have hard edges to them. To vary it, I'm softening off some of those marks with a damp brush.
With the basic layout of the flames established, I now want to build them up. To do this, I'm adding cadmium red to the cadmium yellow to create a warm orange colour. I'm going to add this to the very outer edges of the shapes that I've just painted. Again, I'm applying it to dry paper, but I am able to soften it off in places and blend it in using a damp brush. Although I'm following a previously established layout, there's nothing to stop me improvising. Adding the odd little lick of flame here and there can help to maintain the random natural look. It's also worth noting that I'm not softening off every brush mark. Smooth transitions suggest rounded flames, while hard contrasts help to pull some elements forward and push others back all of which helps to reinforce the three-dimensional properties of the fire. I don't want it to look flat. This is a three-dimensional object existing in a three-dimensional space. One of the big challenges of any painter is creating the illusion of such a space on what is essentially a flat two-dimensional sheet of paper. Or did I mention avoiding patterns? Repetition is an easy trap to fall into. I would always recommend standing back from your work occasionally just to assess it from a short distance. That way you're more likely to spot any potentially troublesome areas before they become too entrenched in the composition and difficult to rectify. Well, I think my fire is developing nicely. You'll notice that I've intensified the orange mix a little. This wasn't actually deliberate, it's just the way it worked out. But it does mean that I have to disperse that richer colour a bit so that it doesn't draw too much attention to itself. In watercolour, Tone is relative. The lighter and brighter you want something to appear, the darker the neighbouring tones need to be. I'm happy with my fire, but to give it impact and really make it pop, I think it needs a dark background to set it off. For this, I'm mixing up French ultramarine and burnt umber, my go-to colours for everything dark. To apply my dark colour to the background means painting carefully around the flames that I've just created. Of course, another way to approach this would be to mask out the fire beforehand and paint the background knowing the flames are protected. If you're not very confident at negative painting, then this would probably be a better solution. Masking out would also enable better continuity in the background if that was important. As it is, I'm not too bothered. In this example, any variations in the background are unlikely to be a problem. It just needs to be dark so that the fire can take all the glory. And let's not forget about what's happening at the base of the fire. If it's a fireplace, then there would be coals or logs crackling away. The point is, whatever you place at the base of your flames, they too need to be dark. So I'm continuing to use the heavy burnt umber and French ultramarine mix for this purpose. Once again, repetitive patterns need to be avoided, and it's important to concentrate on the spaces between the brush marks and not on the brush marks themselves. Hmm, baked taties in foil on an open fire. Best way to cook them. Finally, it's back to the cadmium yellow and cadmium red mix. 
This time I've made it a little stronger and I'm going to add it to my flames just to give it extra warmth and intensity in places. I'm particularly focusing on the areas around the dark tones at the base. The white areas may be the hottest, but it is warm colours that really convey the idea of heat. The other areas where the warm colours are particularly welcome are at the very tips of those finer licks of flame. Which brings me back to the beach fire at Lindisfarne. Well, to view the full sketching and painting demonstration and access the step-by-step -step project notes, you'll need to sign up to my online student service. Well, a member subscription is only £9 per month. With that, you'll have instant access to this and many more projects and tutorials. If you're looking for one-to-one -one tuition and personal guidance from me, then there are also student upgrade options available. Well, the occasions when you need to paint fire may be rare, but it's always fun to experiment. Don't get yourself burnt though. Dracaris.